Welcome back. I'd like to quickly recap on the results of the previous sections. So, if we have the complex number a outside of e to the i theta, this can be re-expressed using Euler's equation as a outside of cosine theta plus iota times sine theta. Or we can say that the arbitrary complex number is given the placeholder z, and it's composed of the real component given the placeholder x, and the imaginary component given the placeholder y. We know that we can express or represent the complex number on the infinite number plane, which is known as an Argand diagram. And in doing so, we can use either the rectangular coordinates of x plus iota times y, or the polar coordinates of x is equal to a cosine theta, and y is equal to a sine theta. The next concept I'd like to introduce is that of the complex conjugate, z star. And sometimes actually it's given the placeholder z bar, but I'm going to use the star. And in order to take the complex conjugate of a complex number, you need to change the sine or the parity on the imaginary component, such that a positive iota will become a negative iota, and a negative iota will become a positive iota. I've given two examples of taking complex conjugates here. Say, for example, we have z is equal to x plus iota times y. Well, then z star, or the complex conjugate, is z minus iota times y. Also, if we have z is equal to e to the minus i theta, say, well, then z star is going to be e to the plus i theta. Now, one of the reasons people try and use the complex exponential representation of complex numbers is that it greatly simplifies mathematical manipulation. Consider we had two complex numbers, z sub 1 and z sub 2, which were both basically a outside of e to the i theta. Well then, the multiplication is going to become a, an addition operation, and division becomes a subtraction operation. And I'm sure you can see why this would make life much easier. I've listed some other useful identities and results with regard to complex numbers here, and I suggest you pause the video if you want to take them in. The most important, probably, is how to take the magnitude of a complex number by taking the square root of z and its complex conjugate. The next thing I'd like to talk about are the phases of a complex number. Recall from the unit circle the following results. We know that the cosine of 0 is the cosine of twice pi is equal to plus 1. And we know that the cosine of pi, or 180 degrees, is negative 1. We know that the sine of 0 is the sine of twice pi is the sine of 0. So let's plug these into our Euler equation and see what we get. The answer is very useful results, such as e to the i twice pi is equal to plus 1. Or we could say that the imaginary component y is equal to 0. We know that e to the i pi is negative 1, and so is e to the negative i pi equal to negative 1. And this is because cosine is an even function. So putting those together, we can say that e to the plus minus i pi is negative 1, which is a fairly strange looking expression. It has so many of the fundamental elements of mathematics. We can also look at the half angles of pi over 2. And we can say that e to the i pi over 2 is simply iota, and e to the minus pi i pi over 2 is minus iota. Putting those together that e to the plus minus iota times pi over 2 is plus minus iota. We can take iota to its own power, and we see that it's e to the minus pi over 2. The second last thing I'd like to talk about is periodicity. We know that a complex exponential is equivalent to a cosine and a imaginary sinusoid. So that means we can we should be able to use the periodicity of cosines and sines, which are twice pi periodic. We know that the arbitrary complex number z is given as x plus iota times y. So we can say the complex number z is e to the, excuse me, the complex number e to the z is e to the x plus iota times y. Now basically, if the complex number is twice pi periodic, if we add twice pi to z, we should still get z. And this is what I've shown explicitly at the bottom center of your screen.
and we see that the complex number e to the z is in fact twice pi periodic. And we come to the final thing I'd like to talk about, and this is known as Euler's identity. Recall as we saw earlier on that e to the plus minus i times pi is simply minus 1. And this hints at, if we, what if we add 1 to this? We'll get 0. And that is known as Euler's identity, which is given here. Wow, that is one of the most special identities in mathematics. It has so many of the fundamental elements that you would use, such as e, pi, iota, the number 1, and 0. Okay, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Please pass it to your friends and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.